So welcome, welcome Stephanie, welcome to our studio, the very last Meet the Artist. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here and to see you live in color and presence. <laughs> and I know we are holding our distance, <laughs> we do. but uh, we are here together, which yeah. is really a joy, yeah. I have yeah. to say. Yeah, me too. And um, we are here today to discuss in general. We have plenty of time today to talk, which is good. We are Great. good at talking, I know yeah. that. So we, I don't think we will, um, we will uh, fall out of uh, the, uh, things, topics to discuss. <laughs> But let's start mm -hmm. with the film because we will we kind of have a premiere tonight. It's One should say a premiere. It's yeah. a premiere of Spectacles of Blending, a short film that you have done during the spring, basically. Exactly, exactly. We were um, uh, together with composer Brigitta Mundendorf. I was preparing a huge project originally for Rutriennale. Mm -hmm. And after Ruth Rinale got cancelled, we still had a huge structure, I will mm. tell later a little bit more about it, mm. uh, in the process of building. Mm. So in July, this architecture was ready, was done, was finished to be built. And Brigitte and me, we went there uh, mm. with the architects and to give it the final go and the final yes. Mm. And we used this little moment also to experiment with some musicians and dancers on the structure. A very precious in those times, a very, very precious moment. Oh. And um, we decided to um, get accompanied by a camera um, and a sound lady. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was the base of the film. Hmm. Hmm. It's, you're kind of opening your process from this f spring, which was hard on you. We had to cancel, which was really heartbreaking. We worked so hard Absolutely. to yeah. be able to realize yeah. this huge, yeah. huge... Uh, yeah. How many people? Are it is 53 people on stage. So, yeah, I mean, we struggled a lot to make this happen. And um, yeah, the big lament or the big sadness, of course, came mm. because it's not so easy. And I was, mm. I appreciated a lot that you had the courage <laughs> to go with me that way. And um, yeah, so this film is a little bit a reflection about uh, from the process of Bilderschlachten to Archipel, uh, which is mm. was supposed to be the new piece, and mm. the actual moment of where we are in this hanging in the air process. And mm. um, yeah. Mm. Would you like us to look at the film now? Yes. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. Bei Billerschlachten bin ich erstmal von der Aktualität ausgegangen, von der Situation, in der wir im Moment leben und wollte schauen, was brauchen wir, um bestimmte Prinzipien loszuwerden in unserer jetzigen Gesellschaft und habe das dann versucht in drei Akten aufzuziehen, in einem Urzustand und dann in einem sehr krassen Mittelteil, sehr bunten Mittelteil, wo wir im Grunde das, das Aufgeblähtsein, das Übertriebene, das Schrille auch unserer Gesellschaft, das Bestimmende, das in starken Hierarchien denkt, das von Patriarchat 
sozialen System geprägt ist, das darzustellen, um dann im Grunde im letzten Teil so einen Lösungsprozess zu etablieren, der in einer großen Trauer endet, in einer riesigen Prozession, die sozusagen diesen System abdankt. Und die Frage ist natürlich, wenn man danach weitermachen will, man hat sozusagen das Lament, Lamento gesungen, das Lamento auf die Gesellschaft, in der wir leben. Was, was kann danach kommen? Und was Brigitte und ich in Archipel machen wollen, ist eine, eine Art Utopie kreieren, einen Planeten, einen Raum, den es noch zu erfinden gibt, aber in dem andere Dinge passieren können, in einem anderen Licht, in einem anderen Zusammensein. Was mich die ganze Zeit bei dem Gedanken trägt, ist der Name Archipel, weil wir befinden uns hier in einer Insellandschaft. Auch wir sind insulare Körper in einer bestimmten Art und Weise, aber gleichzeitig meint Archipel immer ein Voraussetzen anderer Archipele oder anderer Einheiten, mit denen wir kommunizieren. Ja, ich bin Brigitta Mundendorf, ich bin Komponistin und habe zusammen mit Stefanie Tiersch dieses Projekt Archipel eigentlich ins Leben gerufen. So, hier sind unsere beiden, genau, ich stelle kurz vor, das sind unsere beiden Schlagzeugerinnen. Was vielleicht noch wirklich sehr spannend ist, ist an dieser Skulptur, dass ja Instrumente eingebaut worden sind von dem Thomas Meixner, also ein Instrumentenbauer. Und das sind eigentlich lauter Instrumente, die erstmal so gar nicht existieren oder die umfunktioniert werden. Yeah, it's uh, about appropriation, it's about how we, you know, start to deal with it and, and bring it alive. Can we hang from the structure? Yes. Like the... Yeah, in this, yeah. this part here in the middle, um, I mean, all what is steel here, yeah. all this, it's super, okay. you know, you can, it's super, super uh, stable. There's something to do with this, the in-betweens, actually. And then what triggers you a lot, of course, is the hanging stuff, no? All the, you know, you know, use the momentum all the time to bring you in another space. That's, I, that's cool.
Die Theorien Donna Haraways beschäftigen mich schon relativ lange. Auch für Bilderschlachten war das ein ganz wichtiges Thema. Und zwar ganz besonders ihre These Make Kin Not Babies, die erstmal so ein bisschen provokant daherkommt, aber eigentlich meint, dass man in neue Verwandtschaftsbeziehungen zueinander treten soll. Für den Tanz im Speziellen bedeutet das, dass wir versuchen, in Gefügen zu arbeiten, in Gefügen unserer Ideen, unserer Körper, aber auch ganz stark im Verbund mit dem Raum und in dem Falle jetzt hier mit der Architektur, dass wir die Architektur als etwas begreifen, sozusagen ein Player, ein Mitspieler oder eine mit uns verwandte organische Materie, mit der wir versuchen, anders umgehen zu lernen. The way you apprehend it, and you did, did now really beautifully, you know, that to, to actually extend it in its, in its shape and not, it's not an opposition to your body. With Archipel, I feel like um, it's not about showing, it's about being. And uh, the set, is also one of the performers, I feel. And there is no hier hierarchy, like in between us and the set. It's, we have to adapt to the, to, to the set as much as I feel like the set adapts to us. ist, denke ich, in so einer Zusammenarbeit, dass wir alles das, was Hierarchie etablieren könnte, vergessen oder nicht zum Vorschein bringen lassen, beziehungsweise gar nicht erst erstehen lassen, sondern uns auf einem sehr gleichberechtigten Feld miteinander bewegen. I think that's a symbol also of where we are, how we are as a, as a group, and throughout these years, what, what we are getting to as a, as a community of friends, people, artists. Dieses Archipel wird von allen bespielt, also auch von den Tänzerinnen. Wir holen eigentlich alle Klänge da raus. Also wir haben bis zu 20 Mikrofone, die wir überall hier implementieren, die zum Teil einfach verstärken. Das heißt, wir können die leisesten Geräusche auf dieser Platte plötzlich sehr laut hören. Diese Insel kann dadurch eigentlich ihre Bedeutung komplett verändern. Also sie kann etwas sehr Animalisches haben, sie kann etwas sehr, sehr Menschliches haben. Sie kann aber auch, wenn wir das möchten, einen Techno-Track quasi abbilden. In meiner Arbeit spielt Interdisziplinarität schon immer eine ganz wichtige Rolle. Die letzten Jahre beschäftige ich mich ganz viel mit Musik. Die Begegnung mit Brigitte Mundendorf spielt in dem Zusammenhang eine ganz besondere Rolle. Ja. Unser Ziel ist es in unserer Zusammenarbeit, gemeinsame Scores, gemeinsame Partituren zu schreiben. Das heißt, wir bringen nicht ab einem gewissen Punkt Partitur und Choreografie zusammen, sondern sie entstehen in einem gemeinsamen Prozess. Und das ist für mich in meiner Arbeit, ähm, stellt das was relativ Neues dar und für Brigitte auch. Also wir bewegen uns da in Neuland. Das ist super schwer, aber wir machen es gut. Oh, 
Okay. Thank you. Everything is working together as a symbiosis, as one breathing, moving environment. Diese Vorstellung davon, dass man etwas rausruft und es gibt ein Echo und eine Resonanz aus anderen Räumen heraus, die finde ich für diese Arbeit sehr spannend. Und was in dieser Woche passiert ist, gerade mit der Architektur, war ganz spannend, weil sie, obwohl sie gleich bleibt, eine stetige Transformation durchmacht in der Art und Weise, wie wir mit ihr umgehen. Mal erscheint sie klein, mal riesengroß, mal vibriert sie, mal bedeutet sie eine Gefahr, mal äh, wird sie ein Zuhause, mal ist sie Nische, mal spuckt sie uns aus. Und diese Transformation, die auch wir ja versuchen darzustellen oder die wir versuchen zu leben und in unsere Körper zu bekommen, dass die eine erstmal gedacht stabile, statische Struktur, das von sich aus äh, hergibt, fand ich sehr aufregend. Wow. <laughs> it's almost painful to see it, but not really, because it, it has some fantastic images of the, of the things that are not going away. They will yeah. stay with you. Yeah. Um, like the architecture of the archipelago, and that's just uh, fascinating to see. Mm -hmm. um, how did you meet the architect? Where did that idea come from? So um, the architect is Japanese architect Tsu Fujimoto and um, we, Brigitte and me, we were researching a little bit and actually in Cologne um, there is a park of sculptures and we uh, realized that both of us, our favorite uh, sculpture is mm. the, the one of uh, Tsu Fujimoto which mm. is a white house without roofs, without windows, where inside and outside go, you know, like melt into each other. And then Brigitta was in residency in Kyoto, mm. and uh, we decided to just go for it and to pr approach him, and why not be re researching in the internet? And <laughs> we thought it's just absolutely amazing, very organic forms, uh, a beautiful play with light, mm. and a very um, strong perception of how we should live in, in relation to nature, mm. and like building... Um, around a tree, he has, um, for example, balconies where you communicate. It's really made for that neighbors communicate with each other. Mm. So it kind of fitted our idea, our concept mm. so much. And uh, we kept then on, I mean, not struggling, but we kept on going mm. and trying mm. to mm. reach him. And then in the end it happened and he was really excited. Um, huh. to it's, it's his first time he's working for theater and dance. And we met, he has an office in Paris. So from then, I mean, you know, we, we're talking about a process that is four years now. So we, we met him, we discussed, we have mm. the first drafts of his. And uh, until now, it was a long way. Yeah. 
It's a beautiful structure. It almost looks like a coral or something. That it's, it's really kind of like the looks like the forms come from the nature, and, yeah. but then they are giving this ultra modernist uh, outlook yeah, at the same yeah, time, yeah. which is very easy for you to come in and start. Um, yeah. You know. That's that's his strength also. Mm. I mean, to create things that are stable and light at the same time, that disappear and appear at the same time. So there's a lot of idea of contrast, mm -hmm. um, which uh, we both find very inspiring. And in the beginning of our thoughts, um, because Brigitte and me, we work quite a while together mm. right mm. now, and we wanted to go a step further and think about... Um, what, I mean, we bring dancers and music on stage mm. together, mm. but what if we go one step further and what if um, the stage is the instrument, the instrument is the stage, mm. um, so we kind of make it very um, consequent, our mm. collaboration. Mm. And um, Brigitta invited uh, someone, uh, Thomas Meixner, who is inventing instruments, mm. And he, uh, we saw, maybe you saw in the film, those meshes, we call them meshes, these kind of uh, roofs mm. in the sculpture. Mm. And eight or ten of them, I don't remember, mm. are instruments, actually. So, and they make beautiful sounds. And um, like she demonstrated really well in the, in the film, also she puts a, a lot of um, microphones. Uh, she implements them everywhere. So we can really play on this structure. Wow. And how does the choreography then work in like when you come in and you start uh, we could see on the film that you started improvising and then there was very set parts also yeah, already. Yeah. I mean the moment you saw it was really I mean it was really our playground and we really tried to understand how to move there. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful I can have this moment also before because it's it's it was a bit different than of course in my <laughs> theories and in my head. <laughs> But uh, um, I think what we would like to do is working uh, very strongly uh, with mechanisms that we, we find in nature, like mm. echoes of nature, um, like, for example, uh, lichens or like how you overgrow um, and how you change um, um, the support that, that mm. actually supports you. Mm. So to take uh, this uh, sculpture as something that is not... Mm, you don't only step on it, mm. but you extend it, you modulate it, mm. um, and you integrate it in your choreographic thinking. Mm. Um, so we pass the first moments really about understanding. And um, I think what is interesting me at the moment on top of this is like how do we create new ways of communication again where we maybe not touch too strongly but where like echoes, resonances, um, dialogues over distance, um, we, can, we can play with this. Hmm. And funnily enough, um, this sculpture with these levels uh, has this kind of really tricky communication inside because when you're hidden in one le you 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 know you go through the sound suddenly you go less visually so yeah i think in the end we're at the moment really interested to invent nearly a telepathic uh, <laughs> dance <laughs> communication <laughs> or language yeah it looked so um uh, round, I was wondering if what was originally meant to be looked at in the theater as frontal or, or uh, it was the audience uh, thought that the audience can go around it because it looked so inviting to be able to look at it from many different angles. Yeah, that, that's that's the idea. Um, I mean, these big holes um, that it, everything was meant for of Ruhrtrinale, um, we wanted the audience really to, it's a kind of, a, it's a in between an installation and a performance. Mm. So we wanted really the audience to walk around mm. and choose their, you know, point of perspective, meaning also that uh, you have to play with the on and the off, mm. that there is always something mm. happening that is not, you maybe miss out. Mm. Um, and I find this principle really interesting, you know, mm. missing things also, mm. that you're not have everything presented here, but there's things that, mm. you know, ha happen underneath or, um, mm. or outside your field of vision. Mm. Um, 
So and then you can, yeah, you can sit down, you can walk, um, you can go up and also watch the sculpture from up, mm. which is um, actually one of my favorite perspectives on it. It's mm. it's really beautiful with these organic shapes. Mm. Um, yeah, island, an yeah. island. And did you, you packed this island now and, and you put it in a storage? It's in but a container. But you will take it out. It's in a container <laughs> and uh, it looks really, we are very confident um, that the big festival in Düsseldorf next year, um, everything, it, it looks really good. So we are really happy. Um, Stephanie Karp worked hard on uh, mm. getting uh, in contact with other programmers mm. and um, yeah, one of, one of, uh, yeah, great festival um, is yeah. inviting us. That's lovely. Yeah. Because you can see how much work and uh, there's so much already there. You know, it's not like it was in the process. Um, in the beginning, like we heard Robin today, who is still, they are still in the uh, earlier parts of the process yeah, with the dancers. Yeah, yeah. You were, uh, you know, four years time to, to figure how to do this. So it's really, really great if it can, if it can come back. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and it's we such need a that. long process, you know, <laughs> like four years, it's just like such <sighs> a uh, yeah, long deal, long way to go. And then the moment uh, Ruhe Trinale was canceled, it was just like, you know, you, you suddenly, you know, you're swimming and suddenly you sit on a dry earth and um, yeah, now I think the tricky part is how to keep the momentum and, mm. uh, you know, the dynamic for the for yeah. the idea. So. I think we are all, like, struggling with that. How to keep uh, keep on going, how to do something, <laughs> not even always knowing, like, our whole uh, festival. How, just keep on doing something. Like, like to it, even in, like, you can go wrong and you have to to rethink and all the time rethink and rethink and rethink. But I mean, that's not only a bad process, I think, in the end. But yeah. I mean, this spring of like fun festival falling after another, uh, like a domino effect was pretty hard. And we were discussing a lot during that time because it was really, um, yeah, it's like, it's like never before. I mean, one didn't know where we would go, what we would do and how. And that it's so wonderful to hear and tell our audience and let our audiences know that, OK, it's not just one festival, it's four years of work. Exactly. And yeah, this yeah. is why we invited artists to um, to put these things forward towards our audience, even if we cannot do live performances, because it's not it's not visible. I don't think people understand how much work goes into these processes or how many people are involved in them. Mm. I mm. saw this list on, um, <laughs> I think, in a Facebook. Uh, what are the different titles in one theater performance? And you know, like, like nearly probably 100 titles. Everybody from the box office to the cleaning and to the dresses. And, and how many people are creating our sector and, 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 and the work we do, and it's not always uh, understood. And I think it's, now it's a good time to make it visible uh, when people are missing us, <laughs> that they yeah, know what it yeah. is all about. And I, and I like also that what you, what you did or what mm. you and your team proposed, actually. Mm. It's, mm. Uh, it helps visibility, it helps uh, you know, keeping up, even, you know, just diving into a little filmmaking. It's just a little glimpse, but mm. it keeps, uh, you know, it, we're diving into, we're thinking about what to, you know, you know, we're doing interviews, we're editing. So there is a little, mm. you know, step forward all mm. the time. Mm. Um, so that's, a, yeah, that's a, it's a pleasure, actually, and mm. it's, it, it's helpful. Mm. It's more than a pleasure. It's actually helpful. Mm. Mm. How do you think we can keep on doing like what, you know, if our idea was that we are adding value into the process. So we are not extracting value from the artistic production, uh, but we are actually adding something into it. Of course, our hope at that point was that, that you would tour in the fall. The idea was that we will just work with artists through this curve and then on fall they will go on tour and we go back to business as usual, which, which, which did not happen. Mm. So now we have to recharge ourselves and, mm. and gear up again and, mm. and come up with, uh, with, with new ideas. And what would be your, what would you need and what would you ask 
us to do together yeah. towards the future. I, you know, like we, we, I think, like from day to day, this changes also this feeling about what we need or what is needed. I mean, in the beginning, I felt very much like we need some money to bridge these periods. Mm. We need to help those. Um, I mean, in my field, especially the dancers that are closest uh, to precarity. Mm. Um, so just to to bridge a uh, very defined period of time. Now it feels very different. It mm. feels like mm. this, in the beginning for me, defined period mm. of time, mm. I, I cannot grasp it anymore. Mm. So um, to, to keep up a momentum, to keep, uh, to keep our like, artistic ideas uh, floating, I think that's now my preoccupation, also mm. to be able to invite people like I did before, to do this together in a community, in a collective with me. Mm. Um, at the moment, I'm I'm happy if we have small formats that mm. keeps you know that keep a research uh, mm. going. Mm. Um, we will you know go a little bit into filming with Brigitta. We through a live streaming and we will talk to a choir in Oslo and mm. try to do something. It's all new experiences which. Mm. For now, I even cannot tell, um, you know, where it takes us. Mm -hmm. um, if it takes us to an interesting place or if it takes us even to more sadness because mm -hmm. it, we realize so much what we could have done and what mm. we do now. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think we have to communicate and we have to show solidarity mm. um, and you know, invent, be inventive with uh, with how we meet and how we discuss. So formats like you do right now, mm. again, mm. I, I find it really helpful. Mm. I'm not a big fan, honestly, um, when, when I'm invited to do an online choreography or online, you know, this, mm. is, um, this is for me really tricky to talk and to go into another medium. Mm. Um, I w I'm curious to experiment with mm. this, but to transpose what is there into an online format, um, I would, I think I would, f I would, f I, I, at the moment I feel this is not right. Mm. I think we are all going through this kind of, no, it, it, it's difficult times and we have difficult feelings to deal with and, and pretty much everybody is in the same uh, situation and trying to figure out what to do and how to do and how to go forward. And at the same time, many people are calling to, yeah, let's now slow down. Let's rethink the, totally what we're doing. Let's look at the, ter the terms in which we are working, who we're working with, who is missing, who's here. Um, so I think I, I, it is also an opportunity, at least for the curators, to, to rethink their practices. Yes. Um, and I think uh, whether we want it or not, um, you know, we are kind of pushed into it, and it's not all bad. I mean, even we do reflect our practices all the time. It's, uh, that's continuous work in a way, but this time we were really cornered. Mm -hmm. to to if, if you know, like your toys were taken away from you like a child without the toys and you're like you have your tamper first like oh, I don't want to I want my toys back <laughs> yeah, I don't get yeah. it and then you yeah. have to just start thinking okay so how do I turn my how do the pen turns into a toy how do everything turns into something that uh, keeps uh, on dance and in my our case dance and art relevant and, and visible um, that it's not pushed into a, yeah. into a corner. Yeah, my my feeling in the beginning was very much like um, when you know lockdown came and things got cancelled step by step, more and more. Um, I I didn't I, I I didn't feel a stress. I felt more like um, okay, then yes, then shut up and think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, for me, it was it, you know it's like really like um, as a state of uh, also sadness, I have mm. to say. Mm. I mean, you know, you, you, you have your path and um, then you see also your colleagues and I, I, I did work a lot with African artists. Um, yeah. And you see them like they, they 
of course, much more stuck than I am. I'm still in a privileged mm. situation. I will not s starve from anything tomorrow. Mm. Um, mm. I just need to bridge. And still, you know, this is your passion. This is what you want to do. And this makes your identity also mm. part. So, mm. you know, it's we can wait and wait and wait. But we need to know, you know, I would love to know <laughs> when we can... <laughs> Um, explode again and, go and back. in the mm. meantime um, yeah I'm, I don't feel like overproducing or pushing too much visibility mm. um, I think we need to be visible mm -hmm. we need to yeah say on what we are working um, and then be ready mm. for the moment mm. um, we can do theatre, because I very much believe into theatre. Mm. You know, there is a big call, of course, how much can we digitalize our work, how much new formats can we develop. This is all fine, but it will never, ever replace the, the strength of theatre and mm. the, the personal encounter, the same air we're breathing that w and what we're sharing when we are in one room together. Mm. That sadness, it was really real today when I walked into Ligna's uh, last performance, dissemination everywhere. When you are in this uh, studio day after day and yeah. uh, then you walk into an open space with the sky and the sun and, and you see all these people there and, and you just are struck by this feeling of of how important it is to assembly and to come together, um, which is not so clear meanwhile we're taking it for granted, but it is actually now when it's taken away, it's really highlighting what is our strength uh, also as a theater. I also, I, I, I love and hate theater, of course, like we all do <laughs> probably, yeah. um, but what the core of it, the coming together is so embedded into our European culture also in terms of our democratic uh, uh, means and everything. Like it's, it's, it's part of how we are, who we are, that we assemble this way uh, to address the most important issues and to have a place to gather and to be together and in, in some kind of a safety also. Exactly. It's a social moment, you know, it's, mm. a str it's an important social moment. Mm. And then we can always go on discussing, you know, where should theatre take place? Should it be in these kind of theatres? Should it be more open? Mm. Should it mm. be more on mm. the street? Yes, I mean, mm. this is all, you know, we need to renovate ourselves constantly and, and rethink also, you mm. know. But to not have it at all is, it's, uh, yeah. You are also always very active on the policy level and talking to politicians and really advocating for, for dance, especially in, 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 in Köln and in Düsseldorf, around in North Rhine-Westphalia. Um, how is it now? Are you, are you pushing some agenda with the politicians? Because I think they are as lost sometimes as we are, like what and how to go forward. Yeah, I mean, not ne not more than I did. I mean, but it's a. I think it's a continuous work, and um, I felt um, I felt that in our region, but all over, also in Germany, I felt that there was um, maybe uh, you know after the first shock uh, was lived through, there was mm. a, a listening, and mm. and Germany has quite a few um, helps already for artists. Mm. We need to be in a very close dialogue mm. and see, you know, who gets them, maybe who is expelled, um, mm. thinking about people that uh, maybe don't speak uh, well German, that are not really good in finding the papers and filling application forms. Mm. All this has to be reconsidered. And, and I mean, it's... Um, it's, it's a work that we have to do, all of us, and not only the politicians. I think we professionals of dance and theatre, we have to be also very alert and aware who might drop out of the system right now mm. um, and, and help and, and uh, call those people mm. in and, and, and also tell it to the politicians. Mm. So, um, yeah, I... I, I I try to do that. Mm. That was very interesting. Last night when we talked to uh, Brazilian artists and we asked them, like, how do they, um, how do they deal 
uh, deal with these issues, and they were um, uh, they were asking for us when we asked them what should we do. They were saying like you should really look after the most vulnerable ones, um, which from our viewpoint, the whole culture sector and art sector in in in, in Brazil is very vulnerable and and in a very um, hard situation now. Uh, and still they were calling out, but please look at the most vulnerable ones of us too yeah. when you reach out. And Which is totally true and, and relevant, you know. I mean, we are still talking about, a, you know, European perspective. Mm. And, um, and we, don't, we shouldn't forget and we mustn't forget um, people that also need the, the networks and need the continuous communication mm. like in moments of crisis of course this is this typical phenomenon that we kind of sometimes shut down to the you know to our environs and uh, mm. we're so busy suddenly with mm. uh, going on mm. ourselves that mm. we lose the wider perspective mm. of mm. things mm. and this is people in other parts of the world and mm. of course you know we were talking so much about nature, climate, uh, this is our biggest issue, I think, as human beings mm. right now. And mm. this was kind of dis disappeared from the agenda. Mm. Mm. So, Yeah, I mean, it's not only this pandemic. We have a, we have a list of uh, topics to deal with, which we've been dealing with them for quite a while. But I think this was also a good moment to really turn our uh, gaze into new directions with the solid uh, uh, kind of like intention mm -hmm. to to reach out for mm -hmm. new kind of questions so that we get new kind of answers. Yeah. Instead of our always our questions and yeah. then getting yeah. the the the, uh, yeah. the answers that yeah. we could kind of expect. So but it's really a, a time to turn the table in, 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 in so many ways, which I find interesting. And I try to keep everybody be a little bit excited about it because I know how hard it is just for all of us. But at the same time it's like these opportunities that come with our talking here, I don't know who is online, but when we were in webinar we could see that we had people from Uganda or like from all over the world people were tapping in which means it's, it's globally accessible. Of course, there's limitations because not everybody has access to internet. But it's, it's, it's way bigger than what we would have if we would sit, you and me, here on the sofa in our normal festival, which is where we actually are. The, here we would sit like this and we would have uh, something between 20 and 50 people here to share uh, yeah. your thoughts. And this time we can reach out for yeah. much, much bigger audiences, which I feel and audiences that could not come here, audiences which are isolated to begin with, like mm -hmm. we heard from our disabled artist talk, mm -hmm. like who already are experiencing these mm -hmm. difficulties that we are now uh, experiencing mm -hmm. uh, almost globally. Yeah. Is there any like strategies uh, inside, you know, the world of programmers or that you, you feel like that maybe come up in this summer when you talk to your colleagues that have similar problems, they cannot do their festivals, mm -hmm. um, they, they try to, you know, is there like when you talk in between you, is there something that you say, yeah, this is what we want to change in the future? We want to approach differently the touring or whatever, I mean. Yes, I mean, I think it was, this was a, there was big uh, coming together during this time. Uh, Tanzim August was, we have initiated a, a, a dance festival network so we kept in touch with those uh, 13 festivals during this time, sometimes talking to each other what is uh, just to check on each other pretty much. But then we worked really hands-on with uh, the summer festivals, which also kind of came out of collaboration between, um, between um, partners mm -hmm. like Kampnagel and Zurich Theater Spectacle, and then more people joined that. And in the end, we were 15 festivals. Um, really uh, working together to understand where we are and how we can go forward and how we can support the artist. And I think this, was ve this is very interesting because it, it's, it was important that, that the standards for things were discussed uh, on this level. Mm -hmm. 
because there was social pressure also to then to, we want to solve, first of all, what happens when the festivals are canceled? So how are you doing it? What are we doing? So that we as a collective can also put the pressure on our politicians and, you know, like that we can say, well, look, they are doing like this. We need to do like, like to find some kind of a fair way of dealing with the situation, first of all. Secondly, I think what happened, happened was that it felt less competitive. Because, of course, like in any other sector, people are ambitious and they have their own profiles. We all have our own profiles as curators or directors. And, you know, sometimes you, you just um, work with your own concepts and own ideas. I think there was much more sharing ideas, uh, which were not about sharing of our ideas, but sharing the ideas of the artist. Mm -hmm. And this was important. It was like, OK, I have an artist here. And, you know, she cannot come to tour. How do we support her? And then we could assemble a collective here which, which, could, which could do that. This has its dangers, I mm -hmm. understand. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not something mm -hmm. to yeah. be taken lightly. And I think we all are aware of that. But at the same time, this less competitiveness is something that I would think is really, we would, the whole sector would benefit out of it. Mm. Um, and in terms of exactly like the, that we are not consuming all the time uh, artists and works and consuming and consuming and asking premieres every year, premiere, 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 you know, these kind of pressures that I have been building up when, um, when the festival sector has bloated, it's, it's huge. The festival mm. sector in Europe is really, really big and it's big uh, economical. Uh, sector Impact, too. Yeah, yeah. It has a big, yeah. uh, big uh, economical. So it's not uh, a question to be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this kind of like, um, at least talking about these strategies together mm -hmm. uh, with, with with festivals and and trying to 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 arrive somewhere together in terms of like the fairness of our trade, um, the sharing of especially the how to how to have a solidarity plan when it comes to those most vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, how, how, to, um, how to gap between the festivals, mm -hmm. what happens from now until mm -hmm. next uh, mm -hmm. August. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, lot of questions that we can, we can share together. So, but the best strategy is to keep on talking. That, yeah. that's, it's, yeah. I think it's yeah. so simple that the talk comes first yeah. and then comes the actions. And I think, you know, you have concepts in theory and then, you know, sometimes in the practice um, when the set, the outside set changes, it also gives you a new perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, we have this funding um, for this program is called Be Our Guest. It's mm -hmm. about Gastgeberschaft, hospitality, mm -hmm. and it's about inviting people. I do this for three years now, mm -hmm. but now in, the, in this period, it got a totally different, I mean, not different, totally different, but it got a little bit of a of a shift also hmm. um, more in the sense of yes we really um, is not only about inviting but it's really very much about taking care mm. very mm. much about listening um, and about seeing where are we and are we all there mm. <laughs> and uh, um, you know what can we do uh, the ones that are a little bit maybe uh, stronger or more established and you know how can we help each other mm. and support each other and and for me that you know i'm i'm still not there where i want to be but um you know just to to really um most sincerely um think it through and and finding new strategies mm. um for mm. this mm. um I, f I find it important mm. right now. I think the artistic imagination will be the key also, because we need to, it's not only the, the curators and the festivals and the, and the venues and the production houses that need to, to somehow reimagine what they do. Uh, the key thing for all of this, I think, is artistic imagination. It was when, after we canceled the festival, we called all the artists and mm -hmm. we talked and we, we cried and we <laughs> talked and we called again and, mm -hmm. and, we, and we, had, we had this dialogue. And this time we, everything was so fast, but I'm starting to understand that, okay, uh, this is just the beginning because mm -hmm. we really need to think about practices. If next summer there is no going into the theaters as we are used to, how do we then, what can we do? And what can we do that we, we are not serving a small elite? 
mm. which is of course you can always um, limit your audiences and 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 you you will get the, those who can take the risk of coming and those who are healthy and uh, and but like Tanzi August became i hope such a festival for everyone and mm. how do we how do we hold on to that which is so mm. dear to us mm. that we know uh, dance sometimes is uh, considered as an art form or contemporary dance that it doesn't it's like it's a marginal and it doesn't mm. have such a big audience mm. but but it does it, that's not true it does have an audience we just have to find the audience and we have to work towards that audience and with the audience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this is this is maybe our next challenge Absolutely. is to, to, yeah. to yeah. start thinking like, okay, how do we hook up with the audience again? Because they are also our best partner. They are our best defender if, it, if the times get tough. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we need to find a way to do to, yeah, to strategies, yeah. Yeah, not yeah. to do by between the artists and, and the organizers, but also together with the audience somehow. And good ideas are welcome how we should do that for sure <laughs> we stick on it <laughs> exactly. yeah 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 well uh, thank you so much for coming here i want to still um show your book i think there's a camera somewhere um you can at least see that it's a beautiful color <laughs> you ha there's a book that yeah. you yeah. have published Exactly. Yeah. So this is also a way of, um, you okay. know, giving uh, what you do on stage, giving it another, you know, another, uh, yeah. another form somehow. It's and it's uh, beautiful images. You can see it. It's a little <laughs> bit small, but you know, you can see it has wonderful images. Of and yeah, it was uh, because this this performance Bilder Schlachen that we like the title already says it's a. Mm -hmm. uh, it plays a lot and questions a lot the overblown up and vulgar images <laughs> of mm. our society. Mm. So it was nice to kind of pack the, the idea of the stage and to find a strategy and to find a, a way to yeah to make something else out of it. Lovely. And um, there is beautiful texts of people that worked on the piece and people that looked at the piece. So, yeah. yeah, it's a little gem. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you for this.